Well, everybody, movie fan here, of course, it's Wednesday. Time for those uh, viewer comments. All right. First, I want to throw a shout out to uh, Matt Walls and Patrick Lang. Uh, they didn't really make any comments per se, or I mean, they did, but it just, you know, just been interacting with those guys. And so, thank you guys. I mean, that's awesome right there. Just chatting it up. So, special shout out there. Uh, another shout out goes to uh, The Omen. Uh, he commented on, uh, we did the uh, Genre Files. Uh, this past Friday, we were on adventure, and uh, yeah, they really loved, loved the video. Thought the you know, review was really good. So hey, thank you very much, my man. Um, I, I don't know where this one came from. I guess I could have asked, but I was like, I'm gonna save it for the video. Uh, Heather Coleman. Uh, I, I was dropping some facts about uh, let the right one in, and she's like, she read the book, seen both movies, and doesn't know why. That's the quote. I have read the book, seen both movies. I don't know why. I, I don't know why either, Heather. I don't know why either. Uh, but thank you for coming. Uh, and then uh, Dark Capacity 666, uh, he commented on the uh, Sunday Showdown video. And uh, he said, me and uh, the man with no name, uh, we were one of a kind. Or two of a kind, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, but thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Ghostface Kid has some questions, and he asked, um, "Were there any horror stories or legends, you know, around, you know, in the surrounding area?" Well, we. Uh, I mean, as far as I, you know, as long as I can remember, almost every house in the area is haunted. Like everybody has a haunted house story. Uh, in fact, uh, breaking the wall a little bit. Uh, Nally Myers' house is haunted. Quotations. I know, she lives in the middle of the cornfield, right? Uh, anyways, um, I, I, I've been in several of these houses, haven't seen shit. There right now. Uh, even when I was younger, everyone was like, well, you're just skeptical. You, you have a narrow mind. Uh, no, when I was younger, I fully believed. Like, I was wanting to see this shit. And I saw nothing. I saw nothing at all. Spent the night in these houses. Not a goddamn thing. Um... There was a fairly famous, it may have been, don't quote me on this, I'm not for sure, it may have been featured on Ghost Hunters, but there's a house in a neighboring town, it's called the Whisper Estates. Um, yeah. Once again, I think Misery Black went there, actually, and claimed she heard stuff, and I'm like, really? You know they're just fucking with you, right? Um, so yeah, on top of the numerous haunted houses around here, uh, I told you guys that there's a neighboring little burg nearby us and uh yeah there's the pendleton tunnel which is this a train tunnel that apparently has a crazy history and like workers died when it was trying to build it and people have been killed on the tracks there and apparently just ghosts like a motherfucker just haunt the uh, entire tunnel uh, once again been down there before i didn't see shit that's just me um yeah, and then of course, uh, every now and then, once in a great while, you'll get that Bigfoot sighting, you know, or something, you know, acting to that, so, uh, which I'd be more apt to believe Bigfoot than I would the ghost, but, uh, but yeah, that, that's about it, there ain't really a whole lot going on down here, uh, we do got a Step Cemetery, which is about 20 or 30 miles that way. North. <laughs> I'm pointing that out like you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, north. Uh, the legend there is that there's a, a chain that's on the tombstone, and every time you uh, you go there, like I say, let's say there's like eight links in the chain or 18 or whatever, and then you go back next time, and there's a different number of links. Uh, I've never been there. I've never been there because by the time I got around to like really wanting to go up there and check it out, I was pretty much like, eh, it's bullshit. So. Uh, I haven't seen it myself, so uh, yeah, that, that's about the only only thing there. Uh, he also asked, uh, "What's the worst job I ever had?" Uh, Long John Silver's. Like as much as I bitch about the shitty factory job I have now, uh, it's nothing compared to Long John Silver's. Uh, great food. I, I I will be a spokesman for Long John Silver's if, if they'll have me. If they'll have the Phantom do commercials. Uh, hated fucking working there. It was one of the nasties. Like, I've, I've worked a couple fast food jobs here and there. You know, it's got a fair amount of grease everywhere. Uh, nothing compared to Long John Silver. Like, that whole place. Like, you'd open up, like, the refrigerator to get shit out of there, and there'd just be grease caked on the side. I'm like, where the fuck that grease come from? You come home here. Like, I don't know. I never, maybe I couldn't tell because it was myself. 
But like, you know, when you work a job like that and you come home, you kind of smell like the you know place you're working at. Like Burger King, or like, oh, you smell like Burger King. Uh, which I could never smell myself. I smelt myself when I left, like, Long John Silver. Like, I just smelt like fish and ass. It was gross, yeah. Uh, and I'm just, I'm lazy as fuck anyways, right? Like, I will, I do just enough to get by. Um, uh, and I'm not afraid to admit that. I hate working fast food, especially night shift, because you usually you gotta clean up, and I fucking hate, I, I hate cleaning up my own house, I'm not gonna lie, I, it, it's like pulling teeth to get me, you can probably ask my, she'll tell you, it's like pulling teeth to get me to do dishes, like I just fucking hate it, uh, so, that's me doing my own dishes, and they're not usually that much, I hate doing fucking, like, fast food, so you gotta pull the broilers apart and shit, well there you had to, uh, drain all the grease, uh, the vats, and all that crap would get the body, you had to take it out and scream, dude, it was just fucking gross, so, yeah, I was, uh, I didn't stay there that long, I wasn't there for too much, you know, but, uh, yeah, I was there, you know, as long as I could take it, and I was like, I'm done, this, I'm over this shit, so, yeah, I didn't like it, I uh, love the food, you got fat as fuck working there, like, I've always been a little chunky here and there, but it wasn't until I started working at Lunch on Silver's, because as much as I fucking hate it, and it was disgusting, I love the food, and you had like 50% off, like anything you get. So I'm just like stocking up on chicken. Like literally, I just get like plates of chicken, and it's like, oh, oh. dipping it in, like in ketchup and shit. Oh. I don't really hate ketchup going with chicken. Like to me, ketchup is like the I don't care about anybody. It's like the white trash like barbecue in a way. Like you know, I just you shouldn't dip anything in ketchup other than French fries. But, uh, oh, dude, I just, like, get, like, tubs of ketchup. It's like, ah, oh, chicken, oh, this is so good. Uh, malt vinegar stuff, which I think it's only supposed to be for fish. I'm pouring, like, I'm drizzling all my chicken. It's like, oh, God. Like, grease, like, coming out of my pores. I don't give a fuck. I'm just like, this is the greatest fucking food. It was like crack cocaine. I was addicted. And I gained, like, 20, 30 pounds. It was, it was, it was, it was really bad. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, Long John Silvers. And finally, he asked, have I ever been in a fist fight? If so... Uh, how'd it happen, and, uh, who won? Uh, the Phantom has always been a small, little smartass. Uh, never been tough, so I usually avoided, you know, any kind of confrontation. Uh, if it would ever happen, I can usually talk myself out of it. Uh, there was only one time, and I, I don't want to use the word fist fight, because it was definitely not a fist fight. At all. Uh, it was, uh, junior high, uh, you know, we're all... I don't know how old you're in junior high. We were like 13 or something like that. 12 or 13. Uh, however, there was a guy there. Uh, I won't drop his name. Anyways, he was held back like three years in the 8th grade, right? Like, seriously, this motherfucker had like a mustache and beard and shit. Still there. And anyways, just, he was naturally going to just be the bully, right? Like, he was just like clearly the junior high bully. Now, without getting too, you know, in-depth, I guess, but like, when I was in elementary school, I went to a different school, and I was rather picked on there. When I went to junior high, it was like a scene, like a cliched scene out of any movie where I'm like, I'm going to reinvent myself. I'm not going to be picked on anymore. And definitely got more of a fuck-off attitude and just, you know, making fun of I, I, I basically just kind of used my wit and humor to get out of shit. Or, you know, when someone started, like, trying to take on me verbally, I would just turn shit around them and, you know, get a cheap laugh from the crowd. That's all you gotta do. You just get a cheap laugh from the crowd, boom. That dude, he gets pissed off, and usually I was already hightailing out of there, you know, before he got too angry to beat me up. So, I had a buddy of mine, and this kid was mouthier than me. Like, I like I was cocky, but not, like, I don't think. Maybe I was. I mean, maybe you asked someone else in that class, but I don't think I was cocky on the annoying level, like, I never really tried to ruffle feathers, it was just more of a defense mechanism, whereas this guy, my buddy, was just cocky as fuck, and just trying to, like, pick fights with everybody, but he was, like, shorter than I was, and fatter than me, right, like, it's just like, this guy should not be taking fights, but he was pretty, you know, charismatic enough to have, like, you know, all the losers kind of lumped together, like, we were all kind of in this little group or whatever, well, like, literally early on in our 8th uh, grade year, he uh, gets into it with, um, ah, fuck, I'll just say his first name, Malcolm. Malcolm was the 16-year-old 8th grader. And so he gets into it with him. So he's like, you know, this guy's coming. He, you know, he tells back me and, like, five hours ago, like, you know, just come with him. And, you know, just, to, you know, in case something goes down. Well, Malcolm had his little group of toadies, you know. And, um, 
they're you know there. So there's like three. It's three against five, right? And we got the five on our side, but we're not a single one of us could probably fight to save our lives. And once again, keep in mind that my buddy was the one running his mouth. Like until this point, I have never really talked to Malcolm. Like we have never had an exchange or anything. And anyways, as that's going down. You know, Malcolm just looks at me, he's like, and I'll take you. And I'm thinking, like, what the fuck? Like, really? I, you know, so we meet down in the stairwell at this junior high, and there's, like I said, there's five and three. And I'm not sure exactly, you know, what was supposed to go down. I, mean, I don't know if this will be a giant brawl, big rumble, or whatever. So anyways, he just keeps staring at me, right? And I'm like, all right, let me put my, and I wore glasses at the time. Like, let me put my glasses away, and, you know, we'll do this. So, he turns to say something to his buddy, and I just launched the fucking glasses to the side and then jump and fucking headlock on him, right? Now, I'm a kid. I'm 13 years old. This is like a 16-year-old dude. He literally just stands. He's kind of tall anyways, but he was definitely, you know, definitely bigger than the rest of us anyways. You know, in fact, he was 16 in 8th grade. And we were in the 7th grade when this shit went down. Uh, but anyway, he stands straight up, right? Like, he just fucking... And I go up, I'm like, holy shit. And dude, he has me, like, in the air... And it's about that time that uh, the music teacher, who was old as shit, like she was easily like 100 years old, I'm exaggerating of course, but she was old as fuck, uh, walks in on us, right? So there I am in midair with my headlock on, like fucking Andy Kaufman and Jerry Lawler, just, oh shit, you know, surprised he got me up. And she just like, all right, you, 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 come with me. And so he puts me back down and everything, and I'm like, fuck. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm screwed, like, you know, because at that point, like, I don't know. I, I didn't get in any trouble at all, but as long as it goes to my mind, I'm like, I'm going to get in trouble. Like, I didn't even care about the guy who beat my ass. It's like, I don't want to go home and face my parents with this, even though I was clearly, you know, nothing wrong with it. But we go home, we, we go up to the office, and we're all sitting there, and Malcolm just looks at me, and he says, me and you are going to take the fall. Like, no one else was, you know, caught doing anything, so we'll just say it was just me and you, and they were watching. And I'm like, fair enough. And so we go in there, and sure enough, we tell them that. They send everybody out of the room, it's just me and him. And I got a, a day suspension, and he got three days, because apparently he had priors, if you will. Uh, but then we became friends afterwards, like, as soon as we walk out together. Like, because, you know, I walked out, and I go sit in the office, and I was, you know, I guess waiting for my parents to show up or whatever. Um, but then he comes out, and he has to sit down there, too. And we just became, like, good friends after that. And then, sure enough, he's still in the eighth grade when I get to the eighth grade. Which would put, actually, it would have been his second year, the year that we did this whole thing. He was his third year whenever I got there. So he's probably 15 at the time. So. But anyways, so we became good friends. And then whenever I moved on to the eighth grade, he was still there. And could have took a cheap shot made fun of me, but I didn't, you know. Uh, but, yeah, we pretty good friends. And then high school rolled around. We just kind of drifted apart there. Uh, he finally dropped out, which really threw me out. I was like, really, man, you stuck in there that long? You're just going to drop out now? But, Anyway, so yeah, that, that was the closest I ever got. Uh, there was one time, and you know what, fuck it, I'll, I'll, I'll ramble a little bit. I ain't gonna lie, there ain't a whole lot of questions on here anyway. It's mostly just me uh, saying thank you for commenting this, that, or the other. So I'll go ahead and go on this next door. There was one time, there was a big, massive fight that I was on the winning side of, and I didn't even participate. Uh, it was uh, during the short stint I worked at Burger King, and... Just my own business, I'm just doing whatever, and there's like one of the assistant managers is back there. And this dude, he's younger than me, and that's always like the worst. That's why I hate working fast food for one. It's like usually like the kids spray out of high school, like move up, and if I go to that job, I'm like the older guy. It's like, you know, this is like some kid, like literally he's like 18, 19, you know, and he's my, you know, he's my superior or whatever. But, you know, I was, you know, talking to him or whatever. Anyways, you know, he just seemed kind of like he's at you new know, down. I was like, what's up, man? He goes, ah, he goes, Man, there's this, uh, this big fight going down. He goes, I'm going to get my ass kicked by all these different people. I'm like, really? I'm like, that seems kind of fucked up. No one's getting, they're all like 18 years old. I'm like, you know, I'm, they may get, you know, a couple lifts. I'm, I felt confident that I can take out a bunch of, you know, high school kids. So, at this time, I'm like 23, maybe, 24. So, I was like, well, fuck it. I was like, you know, you need help. You know, hey, call the Phantom. The Phantom will show up. So, he's like, really? You'll come out? I'm like, yeah, no, fuck it. So, he calls up his buddies, right? Because apparently they're, and he, when he told me the story, I guess, and I'm not going to bore you with the story because I ain't going to lie, I don't remember a lot of details, but basic premise was there was like 20 dudes who were like going to jump on like these five guys, right? Like once again, the odds are, you know, stacked. And I was like, yeah, fuck it. Like, I want to do this. Like, you know, I've always wanted to be in like a big brawl type situation. I couldn't handle myself, but I still want to be in that situation. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. So he calls up his friends. Now I'm over here in a conversation, and he's telling them these exact words. And I'm going to use the Phantom instead of my real name. But he's like, hey, the Phantom's here. He's joining in. 
hey, he's a hell of a fighter. I'm not at all. Like, literally. I did a little amateur wrestling in, like, high school and shit. That was the extent of it. You don't throw punches in wrestling. So, like, literally, that would have been the end of, like, oh, for, like, a tackle, I would have popped in the face. I'd be like, oh, I'm crying. I'm done. But he's telling everybody, like, you know, he's got this backup. This 24-year-old guy is going to come down with him, and we're going to kick some ass. So I'm like, fuck me. Well, apparently, they tell the enemies this, and they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to bring, you know, so-and-so and so and So now we've got like, an army. And it's like, I don't know, seven of us. So I was, like, getting nervous. Like, it's not what's going on because I had to stay there. I was um, cleaning. I got a closing cook or some shit like that. So, like, when I'm supposed to go home now, I got to stick around now because I'm offered to help him. And, of course, he has to make a bank deposit and everything. So I'm just literally, my heart is just... Because I'm like, dude, like, this is going to get out of hand. Like, we're going up to, you know, and it, the town we was going to, you know, was like a college town, you know, way up there. Big city, I guess, you know, it's not really a big city, but I guess bigger than what we live in here. And I'm like, dude, this could get, like, there could be some weapons here. Like, there could be some fucking boys in the hood, men's society, guns drawn or something like that. Like, I, I don't know if I'm prepared for this, but I'm not going to back out. I just gave him the Phantom's word. Like, the Phantom, that's all I have is my word. So I was like, fuck it, let's, let's do it. So I'm literally, and as I'm driving up there, he's still hyping it up. Now, the place was called Cascade Park. That was the area this was going to go down in. He didn't know where it was at. I'm not that familiar with the town at the time, so I don't know where the fuck it's at. And he's like, well, I got directions. You know, uh, a friend of his was getting directions on the phone. He's like, we'll be there. So as we're driving, trying to find this place, we get a call, and they're like, where are you guys at? And we're like, well, we're, we're almost there. We're, you know, we're heading that way right now. What happened is apparently there, you got a group, and apparently our side finally amassed enough people. So it was almost even, I guess. And I'm saying 20. It was probably like 10 and 10. But either way, boom, they're all there. And I guess the two main fuckers that this all started over come out. And the whole time, they're like, you know, you keep, so they're getting like a play-by-play, -play, right? Now, as we're going on there, you know, the whole time, he's bullshit. I'm like, hey. We're almost there. Like, you know, hold on. Don't start the fight before we, you know. And whole time, it's like, dude, fucking hurry and fight. I mean, this is, if we do show up, I want to be there at the tail end of it so I can go in there kind of fresh and, you know, stomp some people and, you know, get, get my fat ass out of there. So as we're driving, looking around, I have no clue where we're at. And it turns out we weren't even nowhere near it. You know, as we're driving, he says something like, shit, there's a cop. Because, you know, it, we had nothing. We did nothing illegal. But just that small paranoia. Like, I don't know. In this town, everybody hates the cops. I don't know why. Probably because everybody in this town is like a meth head or something like that. But it just had that mentality. Like, everybody just, like, straight, like, oh, there's a cop. Shit. And it's, like, the whitest town, too. So there's, like, there's not that racial thing. No, it's, like, we're all just, like, oh, shit, cops. Calm down. Nope, nope. Look straight ahead. You know. So he just does that. Like, he's on the phone. like, oh, shit, there's a cop. And they're, like, wait, what? You know? And he goes, oh, there's a, there's a cop. And they're, like, well, where are you at? And he's, like, I'm right outside Cascade's entrance. We're not. We're not even fucking near it. But he says that, and he goes, maybe you guys should cut it out because the cops are going to be down there. Apparently, they yell, cops, scram. Now, while that's going on, like, while there's a confusion, I guess the two main guys just say, fuck it, and they get into it. And, of course, our guys win. Like, the two guys are going to come out, beat the guy down or whatever. He runs away cowardly. So... Whole time, you know, we're just like, you know, shit, you know, we just lied and said the cops are coming down there. We don't know what's going on at this point. And he's like, listen, Phantom, just don't say nothing. I mean, if they asked, we were on our way there. We were right there, you know, whatever. And I'm like, sure, fine. So as we're just kind of circling around trying to figure out what to do next, get the phone call. And they're like, hey, we're over at, you know, so-and-so's house. Come on over. And he goes, fine, I know where that's at. So we drive over there, and, dude, it's a victory party. Like, dude, like, they were celebrating, like, this, like, mini beatdown they gave a guy before they all scrammed thinking cops were showing up. There wasn't. But they thought there were cops showing up, so they did a quick beat down the guy. Boom. So we come in like fucking heroes because they're like, oh, it's the two guys that tipped us off the cops are coming. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, we are. We're the greatest people ever. Dude, it was insane. And it's like one of the best parties that night, too. Like, it literally was just off the fucking hook. But we were complete posers because literally it was just, uh, it was a fight. It was the most epic fight that never happened. That was the part I was in. But, uh, yeah, I was on the winning side, and the phantom got loose that night. So, yes, that's that's the closest I ever came. But, once again, both instances, I never threw a punch. I threw a headlock on one guy. I got broken up, and then I just didn't show up and still helped tip the scales into our way, I guess. So, uh, yeah, that's 
There's your answer right there, my man. So thank you very much for the uh, questions. Uh, Dirty Wolfman, uh, during his last video response for my top three, uh, just threw out there, bring Misery Black back. I would love to. Uh, thing is, they have moved far away. A lot further away than I initially thought. Initially, I was like, oh, they ain't so far away. I could still do these videos with them. And the fact that A... She is really just so beyond busy. Like, I mean, you guys remember back when the show was the hour-long format or whatever. She never really, you know, she was on here like, you know, once in a great while, but she went here every weekend. And that's kind of how it is now. Like, she's just really busy. But now you add on top of that the fact that I just don't want to make the trip, like waste my gas to go to that new cornfield and do these videos. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's going to be a very extreme rarity. It's going to be like every blue moon. It's, that's what it's going to be like. It's going to be just the most rarest of occasions. So, but hey, it'll just make it that much more special when we do get on the show. So, uh, but yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's that right there. So, don't expect to see Misery Black or most of the corn children. They're, they're, they're kind of gone right now. All I'm still here is uh, Nally Myers, and I haven't seen her in a while either. And of course, the door's always open. Shit, I'll let Jimbo, who's a drifter, just come in one time. That's, just, that's, how, that's how much our open door policy is. Um, oh, I should put that there. Well, anyways, Danny Ward mentioned that uh, Let the Right One In was his favorite foreign film. So, should add that with the other Let the Right One In comment. So, I mentioned on the horror news, I just did a big rant about doing an It remake. And I just mentioned that, you know, at the end, I said one of the uh, flaws of the uh, original miniseries was the Jack Spider at the end of It. And I just said that. It's also like, Shh. and Torture Vision, you know, he, he uh, hit me up. And he just mentioned on the, on the video, he goes, and they didn't even have that in the book. And like, why was it even in the movie? Well, here's the thing. The book did have the giant spider, sort of. It was different. Like, this was just a generic fucking house spider that was blown up in the miniseries. And it just looked really cheesy and everything. In the movie... Or sorry, in the book, it was it was a giant spider, but it had like a solid property to it. Like it was clearly like out of this world looking. Uh, but the battle don't necessarily take place with the spider itself per se. It's almost on a very uh, metaphysical level, like almost like I mean. And thing is, I just remember when when I read like trivia for it, they were like, oh, they could never film this. And I'm like, you could film this. Because as I'm picturing it in my head, I'm like, well, that's what I would show. Why can't you show that? And I'm like, even with low budget, I think you can do it. Because I think like, you can literally use like the Tim and Eric uh, from Adult Swim's graphics and still pull this scene off. I really do. Uh, but basically, it's almost like it's almost like they're mentally linked. Like their brains are linked together. And the spider and uh, Bill are kind of fighting. I think the other ones are in there too. They're all just kind of Inside this, you know, this space, and there's a giant turtle. I don't really want to go too much into it. I'm not gonna lie. I, it could be, it could be shown. It's just trying to explain it. It's kind of difficult, but it's not impossible to show. Like I'm literally, I'm picturing my head. I'm like, this ain't impossible. You can do this if you just gave it time and effort and care. Uh, but yeah, there was a giant spider, but it wasn't necessarily what you see in the miniseries because the miniseries is a fucking dirty end of a joke. I love the miniseries. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I did just hate the ending. I thought the ending was just atrocious. And they, and they just kind of boil it down to that. Um, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's still pretty much the same outcome, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I, th I think, for the most part, everybody who survived in the movie survived in the book. I could be wrong. It's been a while since I read it. But anyways, uh, yeah. So, like I said, there's still a giant spider, but it just, it's just a little different. It was definitely more um, otherworldly looking. And like I said, the main fight didn't actually take place physically. It took place mentally, I guess you can say. So, And uh, finally, uh, Colin told me, I, just, I made a comment that uh, oh, uh, Sleepy Hollow was one of the last movies ever put on Laserdisc before they discontinued Laserdisc. And she just said, oh yeah, I remember that. My dad had a bunch of them. And I guess like, he converted everything to from VHS to Laserdisc and then had to reconvert back to DVD, I guess. So, or not back to DVD, but to DVD from that, so. But thank you for, you know, jumping in there. Uh, guys, that's all I got this week. Like I said, any questions, uh, comments, it, it winds up here. Uh, I prefer more questions just because I think it's more interesting to hear the question or answers to questions. But uh, once again, if I don't have enough questions, I'll just take random comments to kind of fill up some space. Uh, but I want to thank everybody who does watch my stuff or read my stuff. 
and uh, participate. That means a lot to the fam. It really does. Uh, so, yeah, with that, I'm the movie fan.